part five section two chapter twenty one of short history of the christian church by john fletcher hurst this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twenty one communistic churches several attempts at a realization of the unity and community of goods of the early church have been made on american soil these organizations for the most part have been established on ostensibly christian and biblical principles and therefore deserve a brief treatment in a history of the american church the first of these in point of time is the german seventh-day baptists they were founded by conrad Beisel, who came to this country in seventeen twenty he very soon became dissatisfied with the views of the tunkers of which body he was a member and began to advocate celibacy and the saturday sabbath he withdrew from all intercourse with his former associates and established himself as a hermit on the banks of the cocalico river he was soon joined by others in seventeen twenty eight Beisel formed a monastic order and built cells at ephrata lancaster county pennsylvania celibacy was required on the part of the monks but not for other members of the society the inmates of the cloisters changed their names on assuming the vows of the order and wore a peculiar garb in seventeen forty there were thirty-six monks and thirty-five nuns besides nearly two hundred and fifty affiliated members various mills were operated the monks gave special attention to printing some of the largest publishing undertakings of the entire colonial period were carried on in the german language in the retired settlement of ephrata for example the celebrated martyr book der blutige schauplatz was translated by them from the dutch into german and printed here in seventeen forty eight it is an immense folio of over fifteen hundred pages and probably the largest work from the colonial press pennypacker refers to the sabbath school established by ludwig hacker of Ephrata, as existing forty years before Rakes's school was formed. Beisel died in 1768. Peter Miller, a convert from the Presbyterians, succeeded him. But the society has steadily gone down, and there are now but few members. The old cloister still stands at Ephrata, and another at Snow Hill, Pennsylvania. The Ephrata community kept up a good reputation for morality and piety, and one cannot but look with regret upon the steady dwindling away of this picturesque band of baptist monks the shakers trace their origin back to the camisards of france they say that some of the camisards went to england in seventeen o six and formed a society in seventeen forty seven which was led by james and jane wardley anne lee of manchester england joined this society in seventeen fifty eight she received revelations from god and went forth to found a new church her leadership was accepted by many and she was regarded as the second appearing of christ acting under a supposed divine revelation she and nine of her followers set sail for new york may nineteenth seventeen seventy four a tract of ground was bought seven miles northwest of albany and in seventeen seventy six ann lee's pilgrim church Quote, gathered in its forest home end quote. a revival of religion at new lebanon columbia county new york in seventeen seventy nine largely increased lee's company quote, the shakers first house of worship was built at new lebanon in seventeen eighty five the first gathering into a community was in seventeen eighty seven their first written covenant of a full consecration to god of life services and treasure was signed by the members in seventeen ninety five end quote. their proper name is believers in christ's second appearing but they themselves ordinarily use the name by which they are known to the world it is derived from one of their chief prophecies haggai two six to seven where christ is promised to appear they have special points of agreement with the quakers especially in simplicity of dress and severe morality of life their societies consists of both sexes and all ages the sexes commingle freely together in social converse 
and in business and labor they also worship and eat together but in separate groups the most absolute law of celibacy is rigidly enforced upon all they reject the divinity of christ he became the messiah in baptism resurrection is of the soul the new life comes from the death of sin the day of judgment is when any one receives or refuses the christ life there is no arbitrary election into eternal life probation extends into the next life and the end of the world comes to every soul when born of the christ spirit the shakers believe in spiritual communications they are opposed to war and are loyal to civil government and to the laws of the land but refuse all general governmental offices an interesting body of christians was founded by the weaver george rapp who was born at iptingen Württemberg, seventeen seventy and died at economy pennsylvania august seventh eighteen forty seven when a young man he became impressed with the lifeless character of the church and began to preach in the neighboring villages a return to the apostolic simplicity and earnestness of faith persecution was his reward in eighteen o three he emigrated to america and made arrangements for the coming of his followers they responded immediately and very soon six hundred persons had arrived they purchased land in butler county pennsylvania along the conequinessing creek on february fifteenth eighteen o five the rapists formally organized themselves into a harmony society everything was to be thrown into a common stock a uniform dress to be adopted and each was to labor for the good of the whole rapp was their preacher teacher guide and keeper he was a man of earnest christian character of fine executive ability and sound common sense houses a church a schoolhouse mills a tannery and a distillery were built in eighteen o seven under an impulse of still stricter conformity to the example of christ the rapists avowed celibacy in eighteen fifteen they purchased a tract of twenty four thousand acres upon the wabash indiana where they established the new harmony settlement this they sold to robert owen in eighteen twenty four and the rapists took up their last abode at economy pennsylvania seventeen miles northwest of pittsburgh in eighteen thirty one a german adventurer bernhard Müller, introduced dissensions into the colony and since then the rapists have lost heart sought no more accessions and have declined at present they number only about thirty members they have a saner theology than the shakers though with some suggestions of an extravagant mysticism they abhor spiritualism and look constantly for the personal second coming of christ rapp believed that he would live to see this day with pathetic faith the venerable reformer in extreme feebleness awaiting the approach of death said quote, if i did not know that the dear lord meant i should present you all to him i should think my last moments come End quote. very similar in origin to the rapists is the separatist society of zoar these zoarites also arose in Württemberg and brought upon themselves the wrath of the established church by their refusal to send their children to the clerical schools the government also treated them harshly on account of their disinclination to bear arms some english quakers assisted them to emigrate they arrived in philadelphia in august eighteen seventeen and at once bought a tract of five thousand six hundred acres in ohio their headquarters are at zoar tuscawaras county ohio they chose joseph baumelar as leader they established a community of goods in eighteen thirty two they sought for incorporation taking the name of the separatist society of zoar they have prospered greatly in worldly affairs in principle they are much like the quakers they believe in the trinity and in the usual orthodox doctrines they refuse all titles of honor address every one as thou do reject the sacraments and all ceremonies have no advanced ministry and give equal rights to the women 
unlike the rapists the zoarites hold that marriage is honorable they are a pious and industrious folk but have made little effort towards intellectual culture john h noyes the founder of the oneida community applied the doctrines of communism to persons as well as to property he graduated at dartmouth college in eighteen thirty studied theology at andover and new haven and was licensed to preach in eighteen thirty three he embraced however some strange doctrines he held that the second coming of christ took place soon after his ascension that we are therefore living in a new dispensation in which personal communication with christ secures salvation from all evil and sin even disease and death itself he sought to carry out his theories in two settlements organized on the most unregulated application of the theory of quote, having all things in common end quote. these communities were at oneida madison county new york and at wallingford connecticut for thirty years noyes's experiment went on with much success eighteen forty eight to seventy nine for some years before eighteen seventy eight professor mears of hamilton college led a crusade against the immoral practices of the society in respect to the community of wives and in eighteen seventy nine this social feature was abandoned other changes followed in eighteen eighty communism in goods was superseded by a joint stock arrangement and the community was reorganized and incorporated as the oneida community limited the community carries on several manufactories and has attained to considerable wealth the wallingford community was abandoned in eighteen eighty chapter twenty one